Hey bookends! Welcome to a 10 minute book review. I'm 10. So today we're going to be doing two book reviews. One is an indie arc and the other is uh, a book by a regular publishing house. So the first review we're going to be doing, let's dive right on in, is Band of Shadows by HP. It's either Wait or or white it's their last name is w-a-i-t-t -T. so we received this as an arc copy on netgalley for the purpose of review uh, if you're new to our channel how we like to start off our videos uh, we give a star point as in out of 10 stars how many stars would this book get and uh, we also have a rating system like if this is a movie or a tv show what would it be rated so out of 10 stars this would garner a eight star uh star point so it was really good the only thing that brought it down was the level of repetitiveness and some of the language used other than that it was a good book uh for a rating it would be a pg-13 not for content but because of some of the words that are used. The cursing isn't gratuitous, um, but I think it's ill-placed, personal opinion. So, diving into the book. The main character is named Scarlet. She's in the foster system. She entered the foster system at seven. She doesn't know her parents, doesn't know anything about her family. She keeps having these strange dreams about a door and about it leading to some place that is eerily quiet bright sunshine full of green so kind of like if you walk through the door you would see this kind of if you can imagine like walking through a door and then seeing this so she has her i, I feel weird calling the person her foster brother because i think he's like romantically inclined towards her um but yeah, kind of her foster brother Jensen is her best friend and she tells him about the door and one day she actually sees the door from her dream in real life. And he goes to open the door, it won't open for him. She goes to open the door and not only does it open up, she's able to walk in and when she does, the door immediately slaps, like slams shut when she gets in. So Jensen's locked on the other side, she's locked on the inside. So as it turns out, um, she is something called a fae. Now usually when it comes to fairies and stories, uh, it has to do with magic. I love that this has no magic in it, it's purely just science. So fays are just uh, humans with powers, basically. No magic, no spells, just humans with powers and she's led into the Fae Society, like she's basically out in the woods, and she's led into the Fae Society by someone by the name of Wesley, who was actually the one who brought her in there by using telepathy. So he's able to enter, he's able to construct dreams for people. So his job is basically to create portals for people to get in and out of the land they live in which is called Avalon which is kind of like an island so if you're familiar with this Shannon or Sheenan McGuire series um, something for wayward children so she has like four books out for, for that series basically the, the uh, idea is that you get a door each person gets a door specific to their personality trait or specific to where they would be best suited. So if someone is, let's say, like kind of a wacky type person, they'd be in a high nonsense type place. If someone was kind of morbid or macabre, they might be in like a uh, Frankenstein type place. Um, I believe there's a goblin market. So yeah, so basically different doors are for different people and they lead them to different places. In this book, there are different portals to get into Avalon. They are specific to a person, to a particular person, but they all lead to the same place, which is Avalon. 
something I found very interesting about the uh, world of Avalon itself, or the island of Avalon itself, there's a lot of foliage. There's a lot of green leaves, um, you know, everywhere. But the sun just shines straight on through them. So even though you look at the leaf and you can't see through the leaf, like it, it's opaque, you can't see through the leaf, the sun shines through it. So, you know, like our leaves now, like the sun would be doing like this, you know, because the sunlight can't get through. But there, the sunlight's just going all the way through. So, yes, she meets a woman by the name of Morgana, who is the leader of everyone on Avalon. And she tells her that you are a fae and that there was a grand war. Her parents were casualties of that war. They were fighting in the war and they chose to leave her behind. Uh, with regular people instead of with the Fae and Avalon because they thought that she would be safe. So what this whole war was about, apparently the Fae people can either choose to live on Avalon with other Fae people or they can choose to live on land with regular people. Why they would choose to live with regular people I have no idea but they can make that choice. So there were some Fae who decided to move in with regular people and decided like, bro we could really take this over. And they were going to, you know, basically harm humans. Basically, you know, like take over here. Well, the Fae and Avalon were like, bruh, not while I'm watching. Not this life. So there was a war between the two of them. And uh, Scarlet's parents were part of the war. They were actively fighting and they were actively killed. So she finds out that her power is telekinesis. She's able to move things with her mind. Um, other fae, some can uh, teleport. Others can uh, do like a Medusa kind of thing, like freeze someone's body, which isn't the best because it's something that either can't be undone or is difficult to undo depending on how long it's been that way. So basically she learns how to fight, defend herself and defend others because these people, the the bad fae, they are coming back now. So Morgana was like, we thought we got them all, but apparently we didn't. And there's still some left. They're coming for us. So, yeah. There is a battle in it. Um, we do meet the... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even bring this up. So Band of Shadows, they're basically the bad guys. They're the bad fae. And uh, we meet their leader... I want to say his name is Ludwin. I could be saying his name wrong, but we meet his their leader, Ludwin, and he has a special connection with Scarlet that uh, I can't say because I'd be giving away the book. I'd be ruining the book, the story. So yeah, Ludwin, Lidwin, Ludwin, Ladwin, Onyx. He goes by two names. So if you look at the book, this is an art copy, so it's kind of it, you can't really see it too well. But it says uh, the Scarlet, Scarlet Onyx Saga. So Ludwin goes by Onyx as well. So let's just call him Onyx. He has a special connection to Scarlet, which we find out later on in the book. And that kind of warps her loyalties because she doesn't know who's really the right side and who she should fight or defend. So it's a really good book. The only thing that really brought it down for me was uh, there was cursing at all at times. It, it didn't really make sense to me. Um, and it was so much repetitive. Like, there were just parts that were repetitive. And I didn't like that. Like, okay, so when she meets Wesley, Wesley's like, You're a fae! You're a fae! You're a fae! You're a fae! When she meets Morgana, You're a fae! Your parents were a fae! You're a fae! Your parents were a fae! I was like, yeah, we get it. She a fae, he a fae, they a fae, we all fae, we get it. It, it was it, it was annoying, the repetitiveness, but I understand that it is an art copy, so I'm sure there'll be some editing uh, going on. It definitely wasn't enough to the point where I said I'm not going to read it, because it, it was a really good book. Once I got past that particular, I think it was like two chapters. The chapters are kind of short, which is good, so it's like two chapters that uh, had the repetitiveness in it. Once that was done, though, uh, the rest of it was pretty good. I'd have to say that my favorite character in it is Riker. He's, is he kind of like a healer? Kind of like a healer. But my favorite character is Riker. So we do advise, like, we do um, recommend this book. 
it's not out just yet i don't have a date when it will be out but i'm hoping that it looks like it's gonna be set up for a series i'm hoping for a duology but if it is a trilogy i'd follow all three books so yeah band of shadows Let's see it one more time so one more time this is a eight out of ten stars eight out of ten stars and rated pg 13 i would even say pg okay next book was a book that we paid for yeah so this one is geekerella by ashley poston so the star rating for this out of 10 stars it is a four star read yeah it was not the greatest and for a rating it will be rated pg i don't say pg pg 13 it's not really salacious or anything like that there's some language used in it but it's so so stupid so let's get on into it danielle so this is a uh retelling a fairy tale retelling of cinderella danielle or ellie is cinderella and she lives with her i wouldn't say evil stepmom i'd say maybe perhaps annoying stepmother and her twin stepsisters her father is dead of course and her mother is long dead she is a starfield fan starfield is like star war the star trek so it's like star trek but you know it's like It's kind of like Star Trek, but not really. It's kind of kitschy. Anyway, that's something else. So anyway, yeah, it's a show that hasn't been uh, in syndication in years. Uh, well, hasn't been in production in years. It came on when her dad was a kid, and so it was a big thing between her and her father because he would rewatch old tapes of it, and you know he was a cosplayer her mother was a cosplayer they loved cosplay so much they even started their own con so you know that that was awesome that was the life that they lived and uh yeah so she's really into starfield when she finds out that the person who's going to be playing the prince commander who's like the lead in the show is going to be someone who's from this 90210 type show she's like screw this like she's just she's mad because like he is not our prince commander and she gets on her blog and just like eats him alive just chews him up spits him out walks away darren is the prince charming now what's interesting about this is usually when it comes to a cinderella type story we don't really get the point of view of Cin of uh prince charming because there's just so much going on with cinderella that you know prince charming is more so of a side character of course because it's cinderella but uh yeah so he is the the star of the new movie and he's also a geek himself and he goes through a lot of self-doubt because he's like oh my god i just read this blog from this woman Reb uh, rebel gunner star gunner something like that rebel star gun whatever and she hates me in the part and other people hate me in the part and they end up communicating with each other because he calls the okay so he's going to the con that her father set up back when he was alive and he's going to be a judge for a contest there he doesn't want to go to the con because he and his best friend used to go to cons when they were younger but his best friend once once darren got famous his best friend sold some pictures of him to tmz some embarrassing pictures of him to tmz so needless to say they are not friends anymore so he doesn't want to do the con so he calls the uh owner of the con cell phone number right now this makes no sense i've been to cons i've volunteered at cons the owner of the con the one who sets up the con does not have their private cell phone listed online do you know how many wackadoos would be calling just randomly if they had that no that doesn't happen but apparently in this book's world it does happen and uh danielle has her father's old cell phone so darren ends up calling danielle and neither of them know who the other one is so they end up just texting back and forth randomly about uh starfield starfield stuff so 
this is why this bothers me. Perhaps if I was not into geek culture, it wouldn't bother me. Perhaps it would be like a look inside and I wouldn't know. But because I am a Star Trek nerd, right? When the first Star Trek came out, my dad was a child. And when he saw Yahora on television, she wasn't sweeping the floor. She wasn't a maid. She was a communications officer. So this wasn't the first time that people had seen futuristic, you know, movies or shows, but it was the first time that people had seen black people, people of color in the future doing important things. She was an important cast member. She was a part of the regulars, you know, so that meant a lot to my dad. And because of that, Star Trek became a big part of our family. All the iterations except for, uh, Enterprise and Discovery or Discover because I'm not paying to watch Star Trek. I will pay to watch Picard though so when that comes out I am gonna pay NBC for that. They're gonna get me they're gonna get my money for that but yeah not for Enterprise because that was stupid and but anyway going off into something else. So anyway um yes I was into geek Star Trek Star Wars culture. In fact, like from the age of 12 to like 14, I wanted to be a Jedi. That being said, people who are into geek culture or into sci-fi culture do not think in sci-fi. Do, do you know what I mean? Like we still live in the, in the world with everyone else. Like I still have a day job. I still talk to regular people. You know, so things some things in it were just contrived or forced in the book uh, like Darren he's always saying holy blankety blank Batman like when uh, his co-star she has really nice legs and so in his mind he's like holy tan lines Batman and it's like and he does this a lot like it's not just once or twice it's like over and over and over and over and um then when it came to Danielle, her brain seemed, there were times where she seemed mature and there were other times where her brain just seemed to only work in star-filled phrases. So it, it, it was odd, um, not in a good way. What I generally dislike about retellings is that, um, People generally feel like they have to hit marks when they do them, right? It's like this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. Hit this mark, hit this mark, hit this mark. And it's like you don't have to hit every mark. Even though it's a retelling, it's supposed to be an original story. You know, like uh, I like to think about 10 Things I Hate About You is a retelling of a Taming of the Shrew, but it's its own story. It stands independent. Of, like if you never heard of Taming of a Shrew, if you never read Shakespeare or seen the play, 10 Things I Hate About You still stands on its own. So. And someone says Star Wars is kind of a retelling of Hamlet, but I don't personally see it. So I can't vouch. I can't vouch for that. Um, but yes, so this retelling tried to hit too many marks and it was too contrived while doing it. It, it tried too hard, if that's, that's what I'll say. It tried too hard to allude to geek culture and it tried so hard that it missed its mark. And for people who actually are into um, sci-fi or nerd culture, for us, it wasn't an ode to us, it was an ill to us. It was kind of like, okay, I feel like almost now you're at the point of making fun of us now. It, it got to the point, it, yeah. So I wouldn't recommend this book to anyone. Um, it's a nice cover. So if you're a cover fan, you just like nice book covers in your house, that's awesome. You can use it for that, but that's, that's about it. So thank you so much for watching our book review. So that was two books, a uh, band of shadows by HP white or wait. And, uh, this delightful book, Geekerella by Ashley Poston. If you do like Geekerella or if anything I've said about Geekerella sounds interesting to you, she does have another book coming out which is a retelling of The Prince and the Pauper as just with two women. Uh, yeah, so that just came out I believe last week. So if you like this or if if you sound in, if you're interested in it, 
her new book is on sale yeah thank you so much for watching if you like what you see please like and subscribe and have a wonderful day bye bookends